I feel like a lot of players assume that the planets and moons in the night sky are simply floating dead celestial bodies, but this isn't the case at all, rather the planets of Mundus are the literal bodies of the Aedra, or at least that's how they are perceived by mortals. So when you're wandering through Skyrim at night, travelling towards solitude, and you look up at the night sky, you are indeed seeing the bodies of the gods. There are eight original divines, and subsequently there are eight main planets in the Elder Scrolls. Now you might be asking the question, why do the gods take the form of planets? Admittedly it does seem pretty weird, but the planets are the gods and the planes of the gods, which is the same thing basically. That they appear as spherical heavenly bodies is a visual phenomenon caused by mortal mental stress. Basically it is impossible for a mortal to conceive of the divines in their actual forms, since each planet is an infinite mass of infinite size, as yet surrounded by the void of oblivion which sort of makes up the night sky, the mortal eye registers them as bubbles within a space, because the gods are literally surrounded by oblivion which is space. Planets are magical and impossible, and thus the eight planets correspond to the eight divines. But the planets themselves also form a function, for example the orbit of Arche ensures the continuation of Arche's law, the law being that those buried with the proper sacraments are not allowed to be raised from the dead by necromancers. When Manamarka rose to godhood, he created a moon that orbited the planet of Arche, and its eclipsing of Arche allowed for necromancers everywhere to actually bypass Arche's law. So the planets aren't simply representative or symbolic, the planes that they represent are from where the Aedra exerts their power on the planet of Nern, where the mortal species exist. Although, despite all this, one has to ask the question, are these planets habitable? Well, if the Daedric planes of oblivion have inhabitants, it doesn't seem too far-fetched for the planes of the gods to have them too, even if they are something of an illusion or a distortion. In the first era there were a group of imperial Manonauts, who were a core of void explorers serving the Elder Council, essentially they were astronauts or cosmonauts. One source talks of how these Manonauts attempted to visit planets such as Kinnereth and Akatosh, but the explorers either disappeared or were merely transported somewhere else in Mundus when they came close to the planets. It is said that there have been sightings of strange buildings on the various planets surfaces, such as angled pyramids, swirling orbiting gears, and these beings that look like massive cephalopods, so it could be that there exists some sort of life on these planets or planes of existence. It would be pretty amazing if you could visit these in a future Elder Scrolls game, but the information we have is obviously extremely limited, so we don't know if this is actually possible or if anything actually lives on these planets. An interesting point is that these planets might not be too different from Nern, because many of the spirits involved in the creation became the earth bones, the elemental forces on Nern, and so they helped shape Nern, and the eight divine only differ in the sense that rather than becoming intrinsically part of Nern, they became these planets instead, so personally I would imagine that the planets are somewhat similar to Nern itself. Ultimately though, we don't know what these planets are like, this video has just been me speculating and bringing together a few different sources. I'd like to apologise for my voice, as I am pretty ill at the moment, but thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.